The Raspberry Pi is a very capable mini computer that's small enough to fit in your pocket, even though you'd probably never keep it there. For about $35 to $40, you get a caseless computer with HDMI and analog composite video output. You can add up to two USB devices, which in most cases will be a mouse and a keyboard, and connect it to the internet via wired ethernet. The Raspberry Pi is powerful and inexpensive, allowing you to create a home media center, internet radio, or even your own VPN server on the cheap. That said, a little setup and a lot of other parts are required to get it up and running. So in this video, we're going to show you how to do that. Aside from the Raspberry Pi itself, you're going to need a couple of other things. You're going to need a TV and an HDMI cable to hook it up, or you can use a TV that uses analog composite input. You'll also need an SD card to install the operating system on. You need a 4GB Class 4 SD card or better, and it has to be compatible with Linux. If you visit the post on Lifehacker that we'll mention at the end of this video, you can find information on how to figure out if your card is compatible. You also need a USB keyboard and mouse to get things set up, an ethernet cable if you want to connect to the internet, and a micro USB power supply that can provide at least 700 milliamps at 5 volts. Pretty much any smartphone adapter will work, but you need to check the bottom of your adapter for a large block of text. That text will read the milliamps and the volts, um, and you're looking for the output value. So if it is 700 at 5 volts or higher, then you're good to go. That said, we found plenty of compatible adapters that didn't quite work well, so there may be a little trial and error in your process. The first thing you need to do to set up your Raspberry Pi is install Raspbian, its operating system. Regardless of your operating system on your computer, you need to download the latest version of Raspbian, which you can do at raspberrypi.org downloads. It'll download as a zip file, unzip it into an image file, insert your SD card into your computer's card reader, and you're ready to go. Now, if you're on Windows, download Win32 Disk Imager and open it up. If you're running Windows 7 or 8, right-click the application and run it as an administrator. Select the Raspbian image file you downloaded, then choose your SD card from the little menu on the right. Click the right button, and the Win32 Disk Imager will create your SD card. When finished, you can put it in your Raspberry Pi and boot up. OS X has a similar application called RPI SD Card Builder that you can use to do virtually the same thing, but it may not work for everyone. Fortunately, OS X and Linux users can simply use the dd command in the terminal to duplicate the Raspbian image onto their SD card. The command is as follows. dd bs equals 1m, which specifies the byte size, so you don't need to mess with that then if equals the path to the Raspbian image file, and then of equals the path to your SD card, which should be something like dev slash disk 1s2, for example. Make sure everything is correct before entering the command into the terminal, because dd can seriously mess up your drive if you specify the wrong path. Once you've got it right, hit enter and wait a few minutes while your SD card builds. It's time to get everything hooked up. With your SD card ready, you need to insert it into your Raspberry Pi and connect all your cables. That means your HDMI or analog video should be connected to your TV or monitor, your mouse and keyboard to the two USB ports, and Ethernet to your router, if desired. When you're all hooked up, power on the Raspberry Pi by plugging in the micro USB power supply. Once your Raspberry Pi is up and running, you need to do a few things to configure it for use. You'll see a menu of options, and you can mess around with them if you like, but the only thing you really need to do is choose the second one, expand underscore fs. This will expand the file system on your SD card so Raspbian can use the entire card. You'll need to reboot for this to actually take place, so choose finish and confirm yes, you do want to reboot when asked. Your Raspberry Pi will reboot, and it will take a little bit longer to start up because it needs to expand the file system. When finished, you'll be prompted for a username and password. By default, your username is Pi and your password is Raspberry. Once you're logged in, you're finished. Now you can turn your Raspberry Pi into any number of cool things. For more detailed instructions on what you saw in this video, visit the link on your screen at lifehacker.com.